Hey, welcome to another Q&A for the San Francisco Independent Short Film Festival 2023. Uh, I'm Jason Wallace, one of the programmers here, and this is the Q&A for the program All Mixed Up. we got a wonderful, eclectic group of mixed films here, both narrative, documentary, and whatnot, and uh, I'm very fortunate to have all these filmmakers with us. Look at all you guys. Thanks for calling in. Hi, filmmakers. Hello. Hi. Hello, hello. Uh, <laughs> let me go around the room here. Melissa, you're first on my screen uh just introduce yourself what your role was on your film and what your film is yeah uh, my name is melissa i did tender exchange i did everything on the film directed <laughs> produced it edited shot it um and yeah i did the film to because i had been just consuming a lot of like local media in the bay area and i just felt like um and my film is about a needle exchange in the tenderloin that is run exclusively by people who use drugs current drug users which is a little bit different than most needle exchanges that you might find in the city and i just thought that their perspective uh, was important since we talk so much about people who use drugs but it seems that we never really hear from them directly. Fair enough. Thank you for joining us. Seppe, I have you next on my screen. Please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Seppe Rafi. I was the, I'm the writer, director, and editor of Bunny is Missing. Um, and my film is, is about this woman's cat who that's missing and she tries to find it and she <laughs> discovers that something has, something weird has happened. Yes, a uh, very lovely, strange film. Um, and I'm a cat owner, so I especially appreciate it. Uh, Tim, you're next. Timothy, please. Hi, I'm Tim Gunathlaka. I'm the writer of Rearview, uh, joined by with Matt Conway, the director. Um, yeah, I guess Rearview is uh, on its surface, kind of about how obsessed we are with technology and how uh, like apps like Uber like uh, drive us in our lives and maybe in all the decisions that we make um, and kind of looking at how that intersects with uh, maybe the afterlife. Right on. Very clever and uh, kind of spooky film too, if you will. Moody. Uh, Matt, you're next since you're associated with that film. Sure. Uh, yeah, Matt Convoy, director of uh, Rearview. And um, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having us. Thanks for joining us and making your movie. Laura, please go next. Hi, I'm Laura. Uh, I did Living Dictionary Aymara, where I co-directed, edited, produced the piece. It's about untranslatable words in the Aymara language and how Aymara fits into the Bay Area. Right on. Lovely film. Thank you. Uh, Mary, please go next. Um, I'm Mary Phillips. I am the subject of Really Good Friends. Adam Sekuler is the director, and it is about um, my rather unusual relationship with a very good friend. Uh, yes, a very interesting relationship. Thanks for sharing. Good to have you here. And Thank you. Sarit, uh, last but not least, introduce yourself, please. Hi, I am also have a cat with me, so if you see me look you down, <laughs> right on. To not have him meow at me for food. Um, but yeah, my name is Saadi Halaf. I am a Bay Area director. I directed Buna, which follows a African-American chef who uh, kind of creates this obsession with this other chef across the street, which quickly blurs between her dreams and reality. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a drama. Right on. And I loved it. I'm a foodie. Uh, that's not the only reason why I loved it, though. Um, <laughs> but since I'm on you, Sarit, uh, why'd you make this movie? Yeah, I made this movie. How did it start? Yeah, I made this movie uh, during COVID and uh, during the extreme lockdown. All my family was in LA and I was here in the Bay Area. And um, I was kind of like not seeing anyone. And the only like remnants of relationships I was having with people who were living across from me and me watching them through their windows, which I know hindsight sounds creepy, but it was their choice. They could have pulled the curtains. They decided not to. Um, but slowly I'll just like watch them and I'll be like, oh, he threw out the trash today. That's really good. Like, oh, wow, that's a really nice dress. She had. And I like catch myself making these comments while telling my friends. Um, but I'm also someone who has extreme insomnia and have a hard time sleeping. And there's times where I will forget what I did versus if I dreamed it. Like one time at work, my coworker was talking about this assignment. I'm like, oh yeah, we already did that. She's like, no, we didn't. And I'm like, oh shit, I daydreamed that we did finish it and did it all. So that was kind of like the two sources of my inspiration.
Oh, I can't hear. Sorry, I muted myself. You drew from your own uh, personal life. Yes. Yeah. Uh, sound and which uh, Mary uh, was the filmmaker inspired by your life. Uh, who was? Where did your film start? How'd that come about? Um, I met Adam Sekuler when I went to his master's thesis um, film debut, and um, we got to know each other. And then I went to another one of his films, and we got to talking. And I said, "You should make a film about my community." And he said, "No, I don't think so." But then after we chatted for about two hours, he said, "I'll make a film about you." Huh? And you agree? I did. Very, very courageous of you. <laughs> I'm finding out more and more that yes, it was pretty a, a pretty um, gutsy move. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very uh, generous of you too, Sepe. Um, where the heck did your inspiration come from? Um, initially, it was just a simple idea of what would happen if suddenly your cat turned into a human and <laughs> how would that change the relationship, the power dynamics and all of that. Um, but around the same time, I was working on it. Um, a little dog that was very dear to me started to not feel well. And we kind of knew that she was about to pass away. Um, so it kind of evolved into this story of acceptance and loss and you know, understanding that there are things in life that you have no control over mm -hmm. and things happen for just weird reasons. And yeah. And, yeah. Well, and you mentioned the uh, power dynamics, definitely dynamics going on in all these films. Um, well, Melissa, let me, let me keep stay to the same question. Inspiration for your film. I mean, you kind of hit on that in your introduction, but why'd you make this movie? Um, I, yeah, I guess like what I had mentioned earlier, just seeing a lot of the reporting that comes from like local outlets, whether it be the Chronicle or, um, you know, even ABC seven, <laughs> um, that just kind of like went out there and kind of painted people who use drugs as criminals, um, that drug use is inherently criminal and often would film people without their permission just on the street. And so when I approached the San Francisco Drug Users Union, um, I wrote a letter to them. I made sure they discussed it together to even between their members to even know or decide between themselves whether they wanted me to come in and film them. We did a lot of ongoing consent and this was part of a thesis for my journalism um, masters and, and in journalism you never show somebody a cut of your film and have them approve. Um, but I did. I gave them a cut before, which I guess goes against journalistic principles in some ways, but I also wanted to push on that um, to you know make it more ethical. Yeah. in some ways uh, and uh, that leads me to laura laura are you a journalist major um yeah melissa and i actually both graduated oh from okay university. okay well then speak about your film and uh, you know your inspiration sure well it's part of a series i did on different languages in the bay area i i love poetry and i thought what words do we not have you know as a monolingual english speaker myself i'm you know i'm constantly wanting to learn more about languages and what perspectives I can gain. And upon doing this series, I realized language has greater impact on communities than I even thought before. And so being able to learn from people who speak another language and what language means to them um, and how they're impacted by it is really beautiful. And I think that the film shows the impact Aymara has in the Bay Area. <laughs> right on. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, and lovely uh, capture of the community, too. I think, uh, well, I sidetracked. Uh, your your movie's about languages community, too, to me. Um, uh, and, and then, Timothy and Matt, uh, where's your idea come from? I mean, that was quite a unique film, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess in the, the year or years leading up to, to making it, Matt and I sadly both um, lost uh, loved ones. Um, and so, you know, naturally that led to a lot of uh, feelings and thoughts about about death and, and the afterlife. And I think everyone has a theory on death, like from mythology and movies and, and our mothers. Uh, and so, you know, this was kind of a, a meditation on, on one way that uh, maybe this could play out uh, that involves a station wagon. Mm -hmm. And um, how was working with Matt? 
<laughs> uh, how was the relationship? Since we have we have a, a collaboration here. No, yeah. yeah, I mean uh, Matt and I uh, have known each other for like ten years. Uh, we were just introduced by mutual friends, um, knowing that we both have a, a love for film and storytelling, and so we've actually uh, we're friends for a long time and didn't really start working together until a couple of years doing commercial work. Uh, he's directed a couple of ads that I've written, and so this is the first time we've worked together narratively and. Happy to say we're still friends, I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Filmmaking, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. It makes yeah. you no, stronger. Absolutely. Yeah. And I also think that it was, you know, kind of our film similarly to I think a lot of people here was made during like the pretty intense time of the pandemic. And another, I think, motivation for us, in addition to everything that Tim just said, was kind of being surrounded by a certain uh I don't know, uh, sort of Damocles of mortality. And then I also found that uh, the film that Tim had written very beautifully kind of re like uh, it gave us an opportunity to talk about that and also frankly like from a production standpoint to like make something with a limited cast in a kind of controlled environment during you know a pandemic uh, so that was kind of uh, maybe making uh, lemonade out of lemons I suppose uh, yeah that was one of the things that attracted well, me. They say in independent film like keep the locations minimal right um, to shoot in one location if you can. Um, I mean, we that said, we were crazy enough to like do a process trailer shoot in New York City uh, <laughs> during the pandemic, yes. but you know. Yeah, I know. So so um, what were the challenges of filming all, you know, the shots in the car and across New York City? Uh, yeah, I mean, that was definitely a big one. You know, it was, it, I think we, we definitely were extremely ambitious and also really lucky to have just a tremendous cast between Morgan mm -hmm. Saylor and Babak Tofti, who both have like, uh, amazing careers uh, before and since. Um, yeah, I mean, and we we're also just lucky that I think because of the pandemic and New York City, like, we were able to kind of access some pretty great crew members who we might otherwise not have been able to have come on and, and kind of called in a lot of favors and, you know, made a lot of things happen with uh, limited resources. Did you uh, film so, that during the pandemic? Yeah. Yeah. We filmed it uh, the summer of 2020. Is that right, Tim? I'm so my memory is, uh, is 20, 21, but yeah. 21. <laughs> Time doesn't matter. Now, uh, what about you, Laura? First film, and if so, and even if not, what were some of the challenges? Uh, this is actually the third in the series and the second in the SF Short Film ah. Festival. So thank you. Ah. Well, congratulations. And, uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, what was the last part of that question? Laura, what was the challenge, challenge of making your movie? Yeah, I, I had a limited amount of time. I, ah. It was part of my thesis, uh, and I had to switch... Uh, topics in the middle of my thesis and so running down to Gabriel who's in the film uh asking and pleading with him if he'll spare me a month of his time <laughs> to make a video I think that was a great challenge but it, it was really cool to see how willing he was and how patient he was yeah so. yeah. yeah time's always a challenge mm -hmm. uh, Melissa a challenge I mean I know it's kind of a simple film if you will as far as production but challenges um, I think one challenge even before I started making the film was that I'd been wanting to make it for at least a year before I actually got to do it. I'd been reaching out to every single needle exchange in the state of California, and I kept getting turned down due to the sensitivity of the issue and people not wanting to be on camera. I um, was very happy to get this access with the Drug Users Union, and I guess also like Laura Time, and within nine months, we do three short films, so the most we could spend on on making the film, I think it's like maximum two months. Oh, so wow. very quick. Uh, how did, uh, not to digress this question from this question, but how did you get um, accessibility and permission to that one exchange? Um, first like, what I about the people coming into the shot and stuff like that? Yeah, I guess first I went in and just met, just met them, said hello and came in person. Um, then I wrote a letter to them so they can share among all their members. Then I just went a few times without a camera just to hang out and get the feel for the place. And for the time that we were there filming that I was there filming, I think it kind of became known in because there are very, a lot of regulars that come to this specific exchange and um, just kind of got to know that I was there. Many people really welcomed the camera. They were very excited to be on camera and just doing it like shooting up into the street yeah make being that a public place yeah. help too it's kind of it's kind of mesmerizing um 
Seppe, uh, challenges of having your actor behave as a cat? Uh, no, what were some of the challenges you found? Um, time. That was the main challenge. We had two days to shoot because um, everyone graciously donated their time for this project. And yeah, time time was the main main challenge of it. Um, cool. Yeah. And then, uh, how about you, Mary? Uh, you didn't make the movie, but you are the movie. Uh, um, was it I think the challenge, yourself? the challenges of this particular part of the movie is it's a 10 minute short. We shot for about three hours and the hotel room was very small. And so it was moving the camera to get the different shots. And it, Adam would ask me a question and then I'd have to say it over and over again what the answer was so that he could get a different shot from different places in the room. And, and it, was that new for you? Was that unique for you? I mean, it's kind of the filmmaking can get repetitive and monotonous doing the same take over and over. The, this um, 10 minute short is going to be part of a feature. So we've, oh, been okay. we've actually been filming for five years. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, I look forward to seeing the feature length film. Thank uh, you. Uh, Sarit, um, more traditional filmmaking here with uh, multiple scenes and setups and whatnot. But uh, so that has its own challenges. What were some challenges particular to your movie? Yeah, and apologies, you might hear meowing. Uh, no apologies necessary. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think one of the biggest challenges was location. Uh, we're trying to show these two chefs who live right underneath their restaurants, but also right above, live above the restaurants too, and they're across the street from each other. And we had to cheat it because there was no way in hell we could afford to do that. So we had to get four different locations and in some way possible, seamlessly show that they all live like in a block together mm -hmm. um and that was really hard and i think that like for me it was a good stretch because i think i was able to really really push myself as a director to kind of like think out so think outside the box and like one of the things about me too is just like i'm someone who likes to work with production so like when my producer is just like we don't have money i'm like okay let me figure it out let me be creative okay. instead of being those directors to be like no figure it out i need this for my film i need this for the shot so that was the biggest uh yeah, well, you definitely created the sense that they're all above each other, next to each other, location-wise. I was, I was sucked in. I totally <laughs> believed it. Uh, as well as um, good job recreating restaurant scenes too. Yeah, yeah. Because I know how hard that is. It was. It was funny because like we did it and we were like so proud of ourselves, and then like the bear first came out season one, and then we watched that and we were like, oh no 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 no, we did not nail it. <laughs> that was like. We were like, wow, that was amazing. So it was just, it was just like really funny because we were in edit. We were like, whoa, that is a kitchen. Yeah, yeah. You can't you can't go do that. Watch something with more resources and more yeah. money and then compare your film and go, oh, shoot. It's not quite up to that. But uh, yeah, no, well done on that for sure. Um, what's something you may have learned about filmmaking or yourself from making this um... movie? I think I just learned to work us out of box. Like a couple of days before we were going to shoot, our actresses had canceled on us. Mm -hmm. So like us being like, all right, let's rework our production schedule. Let's just do a pickup day and kind of just like acknowledge, like there's only so much that we could do and kind of just be like, you know what? We're just going to have to do a pickup day. We're going to have to shoot this another day. Let's shoot what we can, which actually happened to the last short film I shot last month. We couldn't finish all the days. So we're like, you know what? We got 75% of the film. I'm actually going to go to an edit review today to see it. And I'm like, okay, we'll watch it. We'll see how it goes. And just kind of move on. I think that's the biggest thing of just like pushing through, even though there's a lot of hurdles. So, and so it sounds like this is very low, no budget uh, productions, right? This yes. Challenging <laughs> yeah. in their own right. If, if actors are calling the day before saying, oh, I can't make it tomorrow. It doesn't sound like they're getting paid very much. Yeah, but this definitely like ruin all the scenes that they're in. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Now, as opposed to uh, Matt and Timothy, it sounds like you guys have some uh, experience underneath your belts together um, and, you know, have seen all the challenges that go with filmmaking. <laughs> uh, what's something maybe new that you learned? Do you learn? Do you stop learning? Do you learn something new uh, about yourself, <laughs> movie making? I'm I'm always learning any anything that I've ever made I've learned something or else I don't think there's any point in doing it. Um, it was it was the first time I shot with a process trailer that was interesting that was learning experience. Oh, can um, you just explain what process trailers quickly just so? I'm you... sorry. Yes, for our yes for for Tracy. Uh, what does that mean? So basically, a, a process trailer is just a it's it's essentially like a tow truck that 
pose the car that your actors are in so that the actors can focus on acting and not actually driving the car. And it gives you, it's kind of the only way to kind of film actors in a car in a naturalistic lighting environment. Otherwise you need to have projectors behind them and be in a studio. Well, it, it, thank you for that. Uh, and so like about what would you average in takes, you know, for performances? Uh, we didn't have a ton of time here and uh, the, the script was, was dense and, and long and comprehensive. So I, I think we only really were getting three or four takes, uh, you know, for, but, uh, I'm glad we got everything we did. Thankfully. Yeah. I'm, uh, you know, yeah. so, so back to, uh, uh, cut you off, uh, something you learned. Um, gosh, I mean, I learned a lot about. I think there was a lot of production challenges on this. And I think I learned a lot about um, the, you know, collaborating with a, with a great team to like, make sure that you're making your days and that everyone has like excellent communication for when things start to go haywire. And also just how lucky I am to have a partner like Tim and a couple of our other producers who really came in and saved the day when we were, <laughs> were busting ass. That's sweet. Yes, it is good to have good collaborators, teammates. Timothy, uh, you want to say something? Yeah, no, yeah. I think um, thinking that uh, writing in a contained environment like a car that would help streamline and simplify the process would, and thus the process trailer was not necessarily as, as easy. So that was definitely an eye-opening learning experience. But I think to Matt's point, I think while we have had some experiences under our belt, I mean, for better or worse, every day on a production also always still feels like the first day and yeah. that it never goes exactly how you want and you're always fighting time and light. Um, and so I think the whole point is just kind of rolling with the punches and, and figuring out what those uh, evolutions and adaptations that you make. And so to Matt's point, having a really strong team of people in front of and behind the camera uh, certainly helps uh, kind of figure out those uh, quirks. Yeah, yeah, I'm a filmmaker too, and it's funny. You know, we already know that, but it's like you never stop learning, like you said. Or it's a reminder. You just reminded and uh, reinforce, like oh, this is so true. Communication, collaborators, partnership. You know, um, yeah, it's amazing how it's just you. You never stop learning that or being reminded of that. Sepe, what's something you learned about movie making or yourself? Um, kind of along the same line. I'm continuously amazed by the collaborators that I work with, but what they bring into the projects. For a long time, I did everything in my short films that I made. Um, but uh, over the past couple of shorts that I've made, I worked with some fantastic collaborators and just really amazed by what they bring in, th their ideas and how much that improves what I thought I had in my head and made sense, but that they just take it into a whole another level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just super grateful and continuously fascinated by that. Yeah, I, I love when that happens when it becomes something other than better than you uh, imagined. Um, Melissa, I'm gonna ask Melissa and Mary and Laura something you learned about yourself more than filmmaking because you know, yeah, it's just that's the question. Melissa, something you learned about yourself making this movie. Um, that I take my work very seriously, I think. Um, I think it was like a month before it was supposed to be done and I had been editing it and I probably showed up to class like almost crying because I was like, this is the worst film that's ever been made. Um, this is horrible and I hate it and I should never get into, I should not do any more of this. But actually um, it was when it turned out great. So I think just like when, just feeling so attached to the, your work and like, it's almost like a reflection of you, which I need to not do that as much. I'm like, it's just filmmaking. I am a worthy human being despite of whatever else I produce. Um, so yeah, I think just not to take yourself too seriously and yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, I, I, it resonates with me. You gotta get out of your head as an artist, as a filmmaker. Don't, don't live in your head too long. Laura, what's something you learned about yourself? Well, we actually studied Melissa's film. I'm a year behind Melissa's wow, Melissa. that film wow. in class. And so just a testament. But something I learned about myself through making that last film, uh, how much I depended on those words in, in tough days, the words that are in the film um, really resonated and uh, I could meditate on those words and um, just connect to my my people more um, as, as we made this film together. And so 
yeah, just uplifting languages. It, it's still very important to me. And so I'm excited to see. I think that's what I liked about it most. I, it was, it was warm and, and it felt familial, you know, it's like, ah, just, uh, this, um, inclusion. Like I said, community, you know, reciprocation, sharing food, sharing music, sharing languages. It just, it was very warm. I, mm -hmm. I enjoyed that about it. Um, and, and that taught me, reminded me how important, like, you know, community is um, and languages. So thank you for that. Mary, um, what did you learn being well, the subject, think, being the star of your film? I think that the filming has been very validating to who I is. I am as a person. And that where my life stool is, my life style is rather taboo to many people. I think it's important to show that to to other people that it's that it's okay to be who you are. And um, Adam and I have developed a really close friendship in the process of making these films, and that's that's very important. Yeah, right on. Well said. Uh, we got time for one or two more. Anything you guys want to add that I have not asked you? Now is your time to speak up. But uh, I'm going to ask you what's next for you guys. Uh, okay. Melissa, what's next for you? Um, I'm currently a video journalist um, at the AP. So that's what I do. Not exactly documentary, even though I try to push them on it all the time. I think it could could get there. But yeah, I think for now, just continue doing some video journalism and hope to do a doc again in the future. Uh -huh. Sepe, what's next for you? Um, well, I, I work at UC Berkeley, so I, I'm a video producer there, but oh. on the side, I I make, I'm continually working on short films and hopefully doing a feature at some point. Fantastic. Yeah, make a feature film. Uh, and uh, Laura, how about you? What, do you? what are you up to? I would love to discover what languages are in the Bay Area more. Amharic, there's a band I saw a lot, Hardly Strictly Bluegrass. They were singing a language from Mali. And so I, I'm just excited and going to just join serendipity and jump right. into something else. Right on. Uh, Matt, Timothy, how are you guys? You ever going to work together again? Uh, yes, I hope so. Uh, I'm I'm in the middle of pr a production on a feature doc about people using um, AI and other technology to try to replicate their loved ones. Um, and I've got a couple of scripts that I've written that I'm uh, in various stages of pre-production on, on making. Um, and I'm sure Tim and I are going to work together again. Good. Tim, yeah. how are you? Uh, I am currently writing a new script that is about Bigfoot, the immigrant experience, and maybe the fallacy of the American dream. And somehow we will hopefully make that connect. Why is Bigfoot in the ether right now? It's like it's a, it's being worked on in several different places. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize that starting it. So that's both exciting, but also maybe a little um, kind of frustrating that it's a little less. Uh, 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 you're tapping into the zeitgeist. You're reading. Yeah, reading the exactly. Hallway. Yeah. For sure. uh, Mary, what's next for you? You're continuing this feature? Are you close to finishing it? What's next um, for you? The feature, the final edit of the feature has been finished. It's in color, Colorist now, I believe. And um, then I've left my itinerary open for next year, and I'll be following the film to the different festivals, hopefully oh, that we've been accepted into. And the film's called The Flamingo. The Flamingo. Are you coming That's to this me. I am The Flamingo. Pardon me? You coming to this uh, festival? You make it Unfor this Unfortunately, I'm not. I'm I'm out of money, to be quite honest. Oh, that's so, too bad. I'm sorry but, to hear that. But I will be. Um, I'm going to Paris in November. Well, there's that's a good choice. Yes. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry, Mary. What do you want to say? No, I'm done. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Uh, next for you. Yeah, I just shot 75% of my last short film literally last month, so we're in edit for it. So I'm really excited about that. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, hey guys, um, you know, I could talk to each one of you much longer about your films alone, individually, but that's all the time we have. Um, congratulations on uh, getting into our film festival and let alone just making the movie. Good Thank job. You. Thank you. All right, well, that's all the time we have. Thanks everyone for watching and supporting independent short films. Uh, catch more great movies at sfindie.com. Pleasure speaking to all you guys. I hope to meet you in person. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Ciao.